What's good team? Welcome to another Small James coding tutorial. Super exciting video today. I've been waiting ages to release this. We're going to be monetizing an API, looking at how we can handle subscription payments. We can handle prepaid API calls. We can service an actual API. So we will build the API. We have a full page to manage people's subscriptions. They can check out different plans with Stripe. So we've got Stripe to handle all of our payments and transactions. We're going to be using Firebase to store all of our user data. So that's going to be within an API key, the current status of the API key, all that good stuff. It's an interactive site. So we've got links to the documentation. We have different prepaid plans. The whole site is fully responsive, looks excellent. And if we just try it out, we can click checkout. We get taken to a Stripe checkout screen for the prepaid product. This one's motivation. We can enter a user, hello at gmail.com. In this case, we're just gonna use a test checkout card to demonstrate this, hello banana. We can process this payment. We get taken to a secondary screen with an API key. Here we can copy this API key, reroute back home, check the status of our API key. We see that it's authenticated. We can see that we're prepaid and that we have 10 calls left. This API key gets added to our database. So here we can see it's just added down the bottom. We've got all this information. And if we come to our subscriptions, we can look at our customers and see that we have a new customer that purchased our $14.50 API call for prepaid amounts. Equally, what we can do is do a similar thing for a subscription plan. So we can check out the subscription plan. This one is pay per volume per month. So here we can see it's zero initial cost to subscribe. And then we bill per API call if they didn't want to do it prepaid. And this is billed monthly based on usage. So you accumulate usage throughout the month. Here we can enter an email address. We've got the demo card. We can enter the demo information. We can say, nice, cool. We can click subscribe. We once again get taken to the checkout page where we get a new API key. We can copy that, come back home, check the status of the key. We can see that the key is authenticated and this time we get a subscription status that says active. We get a button to cancel the subscription that they can click to cancel their current subscription. Here we can see that the subscription is created inside of our Firebase database. And then for both of them, if we're actually just using the API, we can then use the API. We've got routes for everything. So inside of Node.js, we can send the request, we create a record, we get the API key back, and we can see that if we use the API key for the prepaid plan, and we come into our code and append that onto the end, we send the request, that one works too. And now if we look at the record usage in here, that's gone down to nine. If we were to check that key in here, the status says that we have nine calls left and likewise, if we look at our customers for the subscription call that I called just before, if we click on the actual subscription, we can see that we've called it once for a quantity of one. And if I come back in here and run it again, so it was this one, the subscription, we take the API key and copy that and call it again from our code. So we're just going to demonstrate it here. We've got that here. Same thing. It's all done. We can come back in here and check the status once again, it's still active. And if we look at the subscription page for this model, then we see that they have a second quantity, so a second charge. Finally, in this case, they could cancel their subscription. Now the subscription status has changed to inactive. If we look at their entry, the status is null. And if we try call the API once more, we can see that it's a forbidden request. So everything is totally secure. We can see that if we look at the invoicing, they will be invoiced for the correct amount and that the subscription is canceled. So it's an absolutely massive project. And if you want to monetize your API, then this has everything you could possibly want to know. So last thing before we dive in, the video will be split up into two sections. The first section is just going to be building this page. If you don't want to bother with HTML, copy it straight from the GitHub. The link is in the description down below. Otherwise, stick around. It's good to practice some responsive web design building this little web page. And then the second part is going to be wiring everything up with Stripe and Firebase. So without further ado, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get into it. So we're going to start off inside of our terminal and here what we're going to do is make a new directory and this is going to be called money API. Now we're going to cd into money API and in here what we're going to do is initialize a package.json file for node.js. So we'll type npm in it dash y. That's going to create this package.json file and now what we're going to do is install a couple of dependencies. So we'll run npm i 
Express Firebase Admin. We'll want Cores. We'll need Stripe. And finally, .env for environment variables. So we'll hit enter, install those packages. And now that that's all installed, we're going to open that up inside of our Visual Studio Code editor. So we have that right here. And now we're going to create a server.js file. And this is where the magic is going to happen. And in here, we're going to say const express is equal to require express. Const app is equal to express and call that as a method. We're going to say const port is equal to 1337 because this project is going to be elite. And then after that, we can say app.listen, pass in the port, and then pass a callback function that just says console.log template literal string server has started on port, and then pass in our port. So this is our cute little server. We can come into our package.json file and add a dev script in here and this is how we can start up our project and for this we're going to type nodemon server.js so nodemon is going to auto restart our project and so now that we've added that script we're using nodemon so we'll have to install nodemon with npm install we'll save it as a developer dependency using this flag here and then we can just type nodemon that should get added right there and then while we're at it we're just going to install another package called generate api key so there's all of our packages we should now be able to run our developer script and see our server has started on port 1337 so that's cool and now what we can do is start off by creating a public folder and inside of the public folder we can have an index.html and this page initialized with some boilerplate code using the exclamation key is where we're going to allow a user to configure their API account using the API key, check out the different packages, integrate with the Stripe, check out, check the status of the API key and everything. So super important page. So to serve this page, we're going to come back into our app and we're going to define some middleware. And then down below, we're going to have some routes. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to say app.use express.static and then we're going to pass in the public folder and this line is going to ensure that the default route so the home route just at the slash serves up our index.html file so now if I add something in here let's just say it's like ASD and let's say I open up a browser window and go to localhost 1337 we can see that that file does indeed get served up so that's cool as for the routes, we're not going to worry about them just yet. We'll come to that soon. The first thing we're going to focus on is styling this page. This section's about to have a fair amount of HTML. This is what the page is gonna end up looking like that we will be building. Obviously, if you wanna see how to build a page like this in HTML and CSS, then stick this section out. We'll go through all of it. If you're not interested in that and you wanna just jump ahead to the rest of the Stripe integration, all the dynamic stuff in the JavaScript, then the link to the GitHub code is in the description down below and feel free to just copy this HTML and CSS code across to your own file. So to begin with styling the page, we're gonna come over to Google Fonts and the font we're going to be using for this project is Poppins. Poppins just looks super neat every time. So we'll type in Poppins there and then we're just going to add all of the standard fonts so we'll get the extra light the light not necessarily any of the italic ones unless you really want them and now we're going to go ahead and copy this link tag right here using that copy element and we're going to paste it into the head of our document so between the head closing and opening tags and underneath the title just like that and that will allow us to use poppins inside of our html file and now after that, we're going to create a style tag and just select everything using the asterisk, say box sizing, border box, margin, zero, and padding, zero. After that, we can start styling out the page. And so we're just going to give this a font family of Poppins. So that will set everything to Poppins, give it a backup font of sans serif. We'll give the body a min height of 100% of the view height, a background of hashtag zero F, 172a just like that so that should be a nice dark color we can see that is indeed working we'll give everything a color of white a display of flex and a flex direction of column so that's a good start for our index file the next thing we're going to do is add some html to the body of our document 
And that starts off with a div with a class name of container. Inside of here, we're going to have another div with the class of header container. And inside of here, we'll have an h1 tag that says my cool API, whatever you want to call it. And we'll also have an anchor tag with an href equals to it. We'll just give it a pound for the second. And this is going to have a class of first. And inside of here, we're just going to have docs. And we're actually going to use some font awesome icons for this project as well. So we're just going to come over to font awesome CDN. The links for all this stuff is in the description down below. So be sure to check that out. We're going to copy this link tag and we're going to paste it just underneath where we added all of our Google fonts just in there. So another link tag. And now what we can do is come over to font awesome icons and we're going to click on icons and we're going to select book or we'll type in book. And in here, we're just going to make sure we're using the free ones, select the book, copy this icon and paste it directly above where we have docs just in there. So if we refresh this page, we can see that that is coming up on the screen. Our font families are applied and we have docs showing up. So that is excellent. Now we're going to come below this div and add in our first section. And in here, we're going to have an H2 tag with a class of subheader. And that's going to say description. And underneath that, we're going to have a div with class of info. And in here, we're going to have an H3 that says purpose. And after that, we're going to have a paragraph tag that says to encourage everyone to become a great developer. This is obviously going to be specific to the API that we're building, which is an encouragement API. Obviously, you'd probably want to have something that's a bit more valid. You know, it might create a resume or a cover letter based on some information. But after that, we're going to have a second div that also has the class of info. And this one is going to have an H3 tag that says author. And then after that, we're going to have a paragraph tag that says small James. That's obviously going to be your name. So after this section, we're going to have a, another section. We're going to once again have an H2 tag with a class of subheader. And that is going to say check key status. And so this is where people are going to be able to check their API keys. Now for this, we're going to have a paragraph with a class that says pre message. And in here, we're going to say, please enter your API key below to check its status. After that, we're going to have another paragraph that says uh, with a class of error message. This one is going to say, please ensure your API key is formatted correctly. So that's if they pass an invalid API key. Then we're going to have another one that says authenticating message. That's no, actually authenticated message. This one's going to say API key is authenticated. And then finally, after that, we're going to have a div that once again has a class of info. And in here, we're going to have an H3 tag and that's going to say example API key. And then we'll have a paragraph that just has uh, a random key. So make sure that when you make your key, you have a bunch of random characters and whatnot. We can come back and change that later. After that input div, we're going to have another div that has a class of key input, just like this. And this is where people are going to actually enter their key. In here, we're going to have an input that has a type of text. And we're going to give it a placeholder of API key just like that, self-close that tag. And then after that, we're going to have an icon and this is just going to be a circle. So we're going to take both of these circle icons. So we're gonna have the regular circle and then we're going to have a full circle for a fully authenticated key. And these are both going to have a class of code check inside them. After that div, we're going to have one more div and this one is going to have a class of add key and then in here we're just going to have an icon uh, so that we're going to take the check the little tick mark paste that in here and then after that we're just going to say check status so this is going to be a small little button now we can come on to the final section this is definitely the most interesting one this one is going to have an h2 with a class of subheader that says billing plans and this is where people are going to be able to check out their plans we're gonna have a div that has a class of plan container. And in here, we will have our first div that has a class of subscription. Inside of this div, we're going to have a second div that has a class of subscription 
header and in here we're going to have one div and this is going to say uh, h3 and here this h3 is going to have a class of current plan and this is going to say prepaid just like that after that we're going to have another h3 that just says plan so the prepaid is going to be formatted and the plan will not be and then beneath this div we're going to have a second div and this one's going to have a class of active plan just like that and in here we're going to have an icon and this one is going to be the circle check so we'll copy that we'll paste that in there and then this is going to have a paragraph that says active or you know however it might be so that's the subscription header beneath the subscription header just here we're going to have another div and this one's going to be subscription details and this is where all the details will be specified and here we're going to have a div that has a class of detail block inside of detail block we're going to have an h4 tag and this one's just going to say plan details if i can spell that just there after that we're going to have a paragraph we're going to take the tick paste the tick in there and then we're just going to say the benefit so this one's going to be 100 fast pre paid api calls or however many you might want to specify we're going to duplicate this three times so the second one's going to be motivation when you need it and the last one will be pay in advance so we're going to have that that's one little subscription block and then after this div we're going to have another div that's also going to have the class of detail block and in here we're going to have an h4 that says billing and payment then we're going to have a div with a class of billing block billing let me make sure i spell that correctly open that up onto a new line and in here we'll have a p that says price after that we're going to have another p that says the price so in this case i'm just going to go whatever it might be 1450 we're going to duplicate this three times so this one is going to be billing period this one's not going to have a billing period so we're just going to type not applicable it's only applicable this one's the prepaid it's only applicable for the subscription and then this one is going to say renewal date and this might well in this case it's also going to be not applicable finally after that we're going to come down one two three divs so after this div and in here we're going to have a div with a class of update button and in here we're going to get a cart icon just this one right here for example copy that paste it in here and then just have the text checkout as such and now what we're going to do is actually just duplicate this whole subscription so from this div here we're going to come to the same one so that is two up from the subscription so it's just going to be this one right here we're going to copy and paste that or just duplicate it and now what we can do is subscription plan this one is going to have the same active thing except it's going to instead of being active plan it's going to be active plan two we're going to have a very similar section here just with slightly different benefits so this one's pay per usage response generation this one's going to say unlimited api calls and then finally here we will say endless programming motivation just like that the price is going to be dollar sign one zero zero per call the billing period is just going to be monthly and the renewal date will be i don't know we can just set it to a random date so why don't we set it to uh, march 10th 2023 or something like that so if we save that and refresh our page over here we can see that we have a whole lot of content and now this all needs to be styled that is fortunately for us the easy part so we can come up to our style tag up here and start adding in some styles the first thing i'm actually going to do is change this background to a linear gradient that says to write hashtag 000428 hashtag 000046 so that's just going to make it a slightly more linear gradient color the next thing we're going to do is target our dot container and then here we're going to give this a flex of one display flex a flex direction of column we're going to give it a padding of 24 pixels 
So that should push everything in on the page a little bit. We're going to give it a width of 100% of the parent or the body. We're going to give it a max width of 1000 pixels and we're going to give it a margin of zero and auto. And so what this will do is this will make sure that it's centered in the page even when we get to a large screen. After that, we're going to target the header container. This is going to have a display of flex, align items, center, and justify content space between. So that should put our docs button over there. Then we can target the header container and the anchor tag and the dot update button while we're at it. And these can both have a color of white, a text decoration of none, a background of HSLA. This one's going to be 280%, 50% and 0.4. Then we're going to give it a border radius of four pixels, a padding of eight pixels vertically and 16 pixels horizontally. We're going to give it a gap of eight pixels, a display of flex, align items, center, and font size of 0.8 rem, and a border of none. So now we can see our little uh, button up there. If I just change this to white, that comes up as a docs button, so that looks cute. Next, we're just going to give the update button some additional styles outside of that. So that's going to have a width of fit content, a display of flex, align items, center, a margin top of, of 12 pixels, and a cursor of pointer. We'll see that come up soon. So there we can see the checkout button coming down there. That's the update button. Next, we're going to target the dot first element that's going to have a display of flex. And just above that, we're going to once again target the header container and the anchor tag and the update button. And we're going to target the dot hover on each of them. And for these, we're going to change the background so it's HSLA. And this time it's going to be 220, 80%, 50%, and 0.8. And so what this is going to do is that means on hover, we just get this brighter color, which looks nice for these little buttons. After that, we can target subheader and we can give it a font size of 1.3 rem. So it's just gonna change the subheader sizes so that we get that going down a little bit. We're going to target the info sections and so that's gonna have a display of flex and align items of center, a flex wrap of wrap and a gap of eight pixels. After that, we can target the info and let's check what H2 it is. In info, we have an H3, so we'll target that H3. And we're also going to target the paragraph, so it's gonna be dot info paragraph. And in here, we can give this a font size of 0.9 rem. After that, we can target info H3 alone and give that a color of cyan and a font weight of 500. Then we can target dot info paragraph paragraph and give that a font weight of 300 then we can target info i we don't currently have the icon but we will soon and that's going to have a cursor pointer and then we can target info i and on the hover state we want to give that an opacity of 0.7 after that we're going to target info dot trash can and get the hover state and give that a color of coral and an opacity of unset. You'll see why shortly. And then we're going to target the error message, give that a color of coral as well. Then we'll get the authenticated message, give that a color of lime. After that, we're going to target the add key, which is going to be the same as these ones just here. So we're going to go add key there. We're going to go dot add key there. And then we're going to add it to here as well for the hover state. So dot add key hover. So that's going to be this little hover key just there. Then we're going to come down and target the code check. Give that a padding of zero and eight pixels. So zero vertically, horizontally eight pixels. And then we're going to target the key input and give that a display of flex and align items of center, a justify content space between. So it pushes everything to the far end. So you can see that kind of pushes stuff out there. We're going to give it a gap of eight pixels, a width of 100%, a margin top of eight pixels, 
and finally a border of one pixel solid navy. We're going to get the key input and on the focus within, so when someone targets the focus within, we're going to go border color of blue and then we're going to target the key input and the input within it. Give that a flex of one and we'll see it push these icons to the far side. We also want to give it a background of transparent, a border of none, an outline of none, a padding of 12 pixels and a color of white. So now we can refresh that page and here we can see we can type in our little input and these colors will update soon. After that, we can hit the sections. We can give that a display of flex, a flex direction of column, a gap of four pixels. What we're also going to do is come up to the container just here and give this a gap of 24 pixels. So that will spread everything out a little bit, which is nice. And then after that, we can get to the plan container, give that a display of grid, a grid template columns of repeat one min max zero comma one fraction. Currently you can't really see the effect of that, but if I were to make that a two, instead now what would happen is we would have two columns, but we're just gonna keep it one for the minute. We're going to give this a gap of eight pixels and then we can target the subscription, which is the individual plans, give them a display of flex, a flex direction of column, a gap of eight pixels, a background of HSLA 280%, 50%, 0 0.2. We'll give it a padding of 12 pixels and a border radius of four pixels. So now we can check that out. That's just giving it a nice little background. Then we can target the subscription header, give that a display of flex and align items of center and a justify content space between. That's going to push our little thing over to the other side. Then we can hit that. We can go subscription header div. That's going to have a display of flex and align items of center and a gap of four pixels. So now they sit next to one another. We can now target the subscription header and get that header text, which is going to be an H3. So for that, we can give that a font size of one rem. Then we can target dot active plan and dot active plan two and give that a border radius of 20 pixels so it's going to be pretty round we'll give it a background of lime a padding of four pixels vertically and 10 pixels horizontally a display of flex align items center and a gap of four pixels then we just want to target dot active plan two and overwrite the background color so that's going to be cyan so now we can see we have these two little sizes just there then we can target dot active plan p dot active plan two p dot active plan icon and dot active plan two icon and in here we can give it a font size of 0 0.8 rim it's just going to drop that size down a little bit and then we can target dot active plan p dot active plan icon give this a text shadow of 0, 0, 0010 pixels dark green and then we can duplicate this for the second active plan, so active plan two, and just change this to navy, if I can spell that. So now that's just gonna make these little bubbles way clearer. After that, we can target color plan and give that a color of lime. Then we can target dot color plan two and give that a color of cyan. Currently, subscription only has a class of color plan, so we have to upgrade that to color plan two. Now when we refresh that, we can see that the colors all match, which is nice and neat. And then we can get to the subscription details, give that a display of flex, a flex direction, column, a gap of 14 pixels, so everything spreads out a little bit. And then we can target the detail block. We'll give that a display of flex, a flex direction of column. We'll give it a smaller gap of four pixels. So that's each of these two sections. We're gonna target the header, so let's just see what the header is that is an h4 so we're going to go dot detail block h4 we're going to give this a font size of 0 0.8 rem a font weight of 800 then after that we'll go to the detail block the paragraph we'll give that a font size of 0 0.8 rem then we can go dot detail block icon that's going to have a color of hashtag 32 dc32 it's going to have a background of hashtag 0f172a 
it's going to have a padding of two pixels vertically four pixels horizontally so we can check that out we can see that that's that nice little tick there then we can target the billing block and give that a display of flex and align items of center a justify content space between and a color of white so what that will look like is sending everything to the other side now if you made it this far you're doing really well we're almost there this one's just going to be a media query of min width of 700 pixels so we just want to style the biggest screen and in here what we're going to do is just blow everything up a bit so we're going to start off with the container give that a gap of 32 32 pixels so we can see how that will just spread everything out a little bit more we're going to target the header container anchor tags give that a font size of one rim we're going to target the sub headers give that a font size of 1.8 rim so that should bring these header sizes up on a bigger screen sure does then we'll target the info section give that a gap of 16 pixels we'll get the dot info what was it dot info h3 and the p so info h3 dot info paragraph it's going to have a font size of one rim we're going to get dot subscription this one's going to have a padding of 24 pixels then we can target the subscription header and specifically that is going to be the h3 so we can get the h3 in there we're going to give that a font size of 1.2 rim we can target the dot detail block i think that was an h4 we can give that a font size of one rim i should probably just double check detail block h4 short sure was we can get the detail block paragraph give that a font size of 0.9 rim we can target the code check give that a padding of 0 and 10 pixels and then finally we can target the plan container and give that a grid template columns of repeat we want two min max zero and one fraction just like that so what that'll do is it just means that when we come up to a big screen everything splits by two and now we have these two nice little layouts with the actives we can check the status we can type the key and we can do our docs so that's all the html and css done excellent job sticking around now we can get to the fun part which is making it all functional and handling the billing and checking and just wiring out all the different functionalities so now that we are done with the html and css and the static stuff it's time that we come back into our server and here we can start defining a whole lot of stuff for example we need to get our dot env files working so we're going to say require dot env we're going to use the config method that's going to allow us to do the environment variables we're going to define a variables section and in here we're going to define stripe secret key is equal to process dot env dot stripe secret we're going to say const stripe is equal to require stripe and then we're going to pass in the stripe secret key to initialize stripe and then we're going to say const domain is equal to https slash slash localhost and that's actually just http uh, and then we're going to say lead localhost and that's localhost so we'll need to make sure that's correct now currently that's not going to do anything because we don't have a env file so we're going to define a env file and we're going to set an environment variable stripe equals so we'll do that and we're also going to make a dot get ignore and add a dot env to ensure that this doesn't get pushed to any of your important repositories down here what we're going to do is we're going to create our first route so this is going to be a post route and this is going to be at a create checkout session and then we're going to have a secondary path name which is going to be a dynamic path name and we're going to get the dynamic uh, parameter product then we're going to pass in rec res open that up into a function and here we're going to destructure product out from rec dot params just like that and we're also going to define mode price price id and line items just here then what we're going to do is we're going to say if product is equal to sub we're going to execute a body of logic and we're going to say 
else if product is equal to pre execute a body of logic and then we're going to have an else block that just says return res.send status 403. So up in here, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to say price ID is equal to a string that we'll define in a second. We're going to say mode is equal to subscription and we're going to say line items is equal to an array where the first entry is going to have a price that is equal to the price ID. Now that's for the sub, we're going to copy this all for the pre, except this one is going to be a payment method. And in the line items, we're also going to have to add a quantity and that's just going to be one. So that's all good. And at this point, we're probably just about ready to get into our Stripe documentation. So for that, we're going to come over to stripe.com. You'll want to log in, create an account if you need to do that. Then what we're going to do is create a new account in the top left corner here. We're going to call it API or whatever you might want to call it, motivation API. Set your country, create that account. And now a couple of things to notice about this. First, you want to make sure that you're in the developers mode. That's really important. I can't actually go into the live one because I haven't activated my account. So if you're wanting to make money, you'll need to activate that. The live one will have all of the keys that you'll want to use in your deployed environment. So the developers is just for local development. The next thing we're going to do is come over to products. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to add a product. And this one's going to be called prepaid motivation. Here, we're going to say get 10 units of enthusiasm exclamation. We're going to pass an image, just whatever image works for you. That looks kind of funky. Let's make sure we spell that correct. Enthusiasms. We're going to come down and set the default pricing to one time and set the actual price on it. So 1450, that's going to be our prepaid motivation. We're going to save that product and copy this price ID down here, this price ID. And that's what is going to get pasted in here, this price ID. Now we're going to come back to products and we're going to add a new product. And this one is going to be subscription motivation. And this one is going to be motivation on tap. We're going to use a different image. Could be whatever you want. This one is going to have a recurring fee. It's going to be $1. And we're going to say that the usage is metered and we're going to charge for metered usage by the sum of usage values during the period. So the period is monthly. So it's going to be the number of calls for $1 throughout that month. And we'll build them at the end of the month for the sum of that amount. So now we're going to save that product too. We're going to copy the price ID for that. And we're going to set this one in the sub price ID just there. So if they get through all of these blocks, then we have all of that information returned. And so here, what we're going to do is we're going to say const new API key is equal to generate API key. So we imported generate API key requiring this package. And now we're going to create a new customer. And so to do that, what we're going to do is say const customer is equal to await stripe dot customers dot create. Now, obviously this await syntax is not going to work unless we make this an asynchronous function. So we'll add the async keyword up there. Now we're going to create this customer and we're going to give them the key and that's going to be the new API key. So we're going to store their API key in association. And we're actually going to put that inside of a metadata field. So I'll open that up and the key can go in there. So I might even just make that API key. So that's going to create a new customer for us. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say const stripe customer ID is equal to customer dot ID. So that's going to create that for us. And then we're going to say const session is equal to await stripe dot checkout dot sessions dot create big mouthful there we're going to pass in the customer which is going to be the stripe customer id we're going to add a metadata object field which is also going to have the api key that's going to be the new api key just in here we'll need that later for our web hooks after the metadata field we're going to pass in line items is equal to line items. We're going to set the mode is equal to the mode. And then the last thing we're going to do is set a success URL. And that's going to be a template literal string that has our domain in it, just like this. And then we're going to say slash success.html. 
and then we're going to pass in a query parameter that's the api key and that is going to be equal to dollar sign new api key so this is where we're going to give the user the api key after that one we're going to have the cancel url and that is going to be similar so we'll copy this whole thing except this time we actually don't have to give them the new api key so we can just have the cancel.html just there so that will say cancel now obviously we're going to have to create these files in a second but before we do that now that we have the session what we can do is we can here we're going to create a firebase record and then later what we can do is we can use the webhook to access the firebase entry for that api key and ensure that billing info is updated accordingly and what we might also do is just inside of this metadata set the uh, payment type and you know this can be equal to the product just up here so we can keep track of what kind of product they purchased whether that's the subscription or uh, anything else and then finally what we can do is we can say res.redirect and just give a 303 and session.url so that should pretty much do it for our whole stripe thing a fair amount of stuff going on there we can restart the server and that works appropriately the next thing that we'll have to do is come into the developers tab and configure our keys so here we can come into api keys we have a publishable key which is okay if people can see it then we have a secret key this has to be kept top secret you cannot show anyone so what you'll do is you'll click this reveal test key and then you'll copy and paste it into here just like that without any spaces without any quotations save that and then we will be able to access it via this .env file here so i've just done exactly that resave my server and now we should be able to just about create these checkouts what we will just want to do is add two new files this one's going to be called success.html and this one is going to be called cancel.html we will initialize both files just using the exclamation key and in here we can call this one api success this one can be api cancelled and we can just give them the same styling so we can just quickly copy across the fonts that we have in our original package here so we'll just copy this font sheet into each of them we'll paste that underneath the title and we'll do that in both of them we'll create a style tag that targets the body in a similar way to as we do in the first one so we can probably just copy that as well to be fair we'll copy all of this paste that inside of the head of the document inside of a style tag as such we'll do that in the success one as well and then in here what we can do is just inside of the body have a uh, gap of maybe 24 pixels add that into this one too and have an h1 tag that says purchase cancelled just like that and then we can have an anchor tag that has an href back to home and just say back to home and then in the success what we can do is we can have an h1 tag that says your payment was successful and then we can have a div that says class name uh, api key just in here and maybe underneath this we can have an h3 that says your api key is just like that and then we can use a script to access that api key from the url parameter so we can say const url params is equal to window.location.search and then we can destructure the api key equals url params just like that so that should give us the url parameter and then what we can do is we can say const div is equal to document dot get element by id we'll say that this div has an id of api key as well we can just we can target that id and then we can say div dot inner text is equal to the api key and then under here we can have a paragraph that says keep this key secret and then finally we can have an anchor tag that has an href that just takes the user back to the home and we can just say back home 
just like that, pretty simple. So we should be able to test this out now. The last thing that we have to do is come back in here and wire up these buttons that check out different products. So these are the checkout buttons that we have just here. So that's pretty easy. And now I think what we can do is change the subscription so that it's a form. Let's just make sure that we follow that down. So that's to this one here. That shouldn't break our page. You can see it looks exactly the same. However, now what we can do is we can make this a button. Once again, still looks exactly the same, except now on our form, we can say action is equal to slash and pass in this whole thing, create session, except this time what we do is we manually enter the product. So this one is going to be for sub. So that one's gonna be sub and we can check if this works. We just wanna add the method is equal to post. Save that, refresh this page. Let's see if that works. So we click check out. And that's saying we had an issue with the API key. So that's all good. We can sort that in a second, but at least that worked. However, we noticed that it did slightly change the settings. Now we notice that the button size goes down a tiny bit. And so what we're gonna to do to make sure that that functions as per usual is just come up here and just target the form button. And we're going to say all unset. So now when I refresh this, it goes back up to the regular size and that's just because we unset all styles on it. And we're going to do the exact same thing for our other plan. So our other subscription, which is just here, it's going to change to a form. This one's going to change to a button. And that's gonna have an auto submit functionality. So on our form, what we can do is we can give it an action equals to, and this action can be exactly this where the product just gets changed to what it is so that'll be pre we'll give it the method which is equal to post and we'll copy that action down to this other form element so we'll space except this one is going to be sub and now we can save that refresh that you can see that the styles are totally the same however now we can check out a plan that is going to reroute us to a stripe checkout and we can see that we have all this information with the ability to pay and everything if we just give it a fake email.com, we can use the demo card of 424242. This is the demo card. We can do the same for the name and we can subscribe and that should take us to the success page and we should see our API key. So our API key is undefined. However, everything else about this page worked. Then we can come back home. And if we come into our customer section, we can see that we actually had a customer created on this day and we can see the type, we can see everything, it's subscription, it's active, the subscription is active and they will get billed as they use it. So that is super cool. So the thing that was not working was our success route. And I think the explanation is obvious, it's because when I created the success URL, it was actually API underscore key. So if we just update that like so in those two places and try that again, this time we can try it with the prepaid plan. We click the checkout button it takes us to the checkout plan for the prepaid. We can say demo at demo.com, enter the 424242, the test, all that good stuff, process that. It takes us through to the success page. We still get an undefined key. So what we might just have to do is console.log URL params, inspect this page, go to the console, and we'll just come back, we'll enter that again. So there we have our API key, and it looks like it's just because we have to get the question mark out of there. Uh, and so it's actually a different, it's not destructuring. What we'd do is we'd say API key is equal to URL params dot replace all uh, API key with nothing with an empty string. So what should happen now is if I refresh the page, we can see that the API key shows up. Oh, we have to get rid of the equals as well. Can't forget the equals. So we'll process out the equals and now they get the API key. So they can copy the API key, persist that, and that's all good. So we should be able to go back home now. And the next thing we're gonna have to do since that is working, we've got our two checkout pages is make sure they can check the status of their keys and then authenticate the keys with the API. So for that, here we have our first route, that's our post route. The next one we're going to do is create a get route. 
I'm actually going to do that above. This is going to be app dot get and this is going to be an API route so slash API here we're just going to say rec res open that up res dot status 200 and here we'll have to authenticate the API but we'll do that shortly and we're just going to send uh, some JSON that has a message and it's just going to say you can do it I believe in you don't give up yet exclamation so this is going to be our little test api route and here what we're going to do is we're going to have to receive the api key so we can do that const api key is equal to rec dot query it's going to be a query parameter we're going to say if not api key if it doesn't exist we can just return res dot send status 403 we can forbid them Otherwise, we can send back an actual status with the message. And so now we're at a point where we have our little API route. You can have a multitude of API routes. We have our post route for checkout. But now what we should go ahead and do is initialize our project with Firebase. So this is where we're going to keep a track of all of our webhooks. So what you want to do is uh, go to the console, sign into your account, whatever that may be. Once you're signed in, you'll come to a page like this. We're going to want to add a project. We're just going to call it money API as such. We can disable the analytics and while that's loading, we're going to come over to our project and we're going to type npm install Firebase admin. Now that's going to install the Firebase admin package, which is going to allow us to create a new file called firebase.javascript and we can add our configuration for our project inside of there. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a cloud firestore and then we'll click create a database. We're just going to start it in test mode. You can set the location to wherever you want. Uh, probably the US is generally pretty good. And inside of our firebase.js uh, folder, what we're going to do is we're going to type const initialize app equals require and we're going to require firebase admin slash app. We're also going to need to import cert from that route. And then after that, we're going to define get fire store equals require. And that's once again, going to be firebase admin slash fire store. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, let service account equal require. We're going to require creds.json. We'll see where we get them in a second. Then we're going to say initialize app we're going to pass in credential is equal to cert, a certificate, and that's going to be service account. And finally, we're going to say export const database is equal to get firestore. And now that we have provisioned our cloud firestore, what we're going to do is come over to the project overview. We'll go into settings. Then what we're going to do once from project settings is come into service accounts. We're going to click uh, Node.js, this is the config we're going to require here, so same as what we just set up inside of our Firebase. We're going to generate a new private key, we're going to generate the key, so that's going to save it as a JSON object. We're going to save it into our directory, and it's just going to be called creds. Save that, and we have a new file here that's creds.json. So now that will work inside of our Firebase and that's all we have to do. So that is a top secret file and I'd recommend adding that to your .env file. So that should initialize our Firebase pretty effectively. And so now what we can do in the top of our file here, we can say const db is equal to require dot slash Firebase dot JS. So we can move that up there and now we can access our database inside of our project. And so we can run npm run dev see if that starts up we get a crash and that's because we're actually going to change that syntax and just say module.exports is equal to and pass database in there so now we're going to restart our server and it looks like that is now just firestore so let's try swapping that over and see if that works better so we'll restart that npm run dev it looks like we need the constructor so we'll construct a new one and now our server has effectively started up and we have our new Firestore. So that's just some new syntax that we need to know. This is actually get Firestore. I realized I made a mistake, so it should just be like that. We don't want to set up a new Firestore. 
So now our database is working. What we can do is we can construct an entry when we create a session. So here what we can do is we can say await database dot, we'll say const uh, database response is equal to await database collection. Uh, we set the collection, so it's just going to be API keys dot doc. The doc is going to be the new API key and we can set data. And what we can do is we can define data just up here. So we can say const data is equal to, and we're just going to have the API key is probably the most important thing. Uh, and we also want the customer ID. So we'll just say customer ID. We might actually just set it to Stripe customer ID just for the sake of transparency. So just like that. So now what should happen is we should write that response. And we also just want to pass a follow-up argument that says merge is true. So that would just merge whatever current data is already there and not create a new entry. So now if we try that again, we should be able to come back to our API here, refresh this page, go to the checkout page, enter everything here. So we'll just say hello at banana.com, get all of their details, name on card, pay, get taken to the checkout page. So we have the API key here we should be able to come into our customers, check for the new customer, which we can see is right there. And we should also see that come up in our database. And as you might have expected, we have a new document. We can check for the API key, JXQ. We have it right there. We have the API key, we have the type, and we have the customer ID. So that is absolute magic. That system is totally working. We can now start billing people. We're also going to create a get route and it's just going to be check status, just like this. And this is going to be rec response just here. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to say const API key is equal to rec.query. And this is going to allow the user to check the API key. So in here currently we have no status. Uh, we should probably create a status. So we could do that down here where we have data and we can just say status is null or empty. And it can basically either exist in a status of null or paid and then we know the product type that they're going for. And so we could just return their status up here. So if they give us an API key, we can res.status200.send and we can return an object that has status as the key here and we can return whatever status we get back. So we can say const API key status is equal to, and we can just read that straight from Firebase. So we'll need to make this an async call. And in here we can say const doc is equal to await database dot collection. The collection is going to be API keys. So we can just add that in there, API keys dot doc the doc is going to be the api key and then what we can do is we can use the dot get method so that will get all of the information and we can say if not doc exists call the exist method if it doesn't exist we can just say res dot send status we'll pass a 500 status and we'll say else you know we could perhaps just execute all of this logic in here so it's either one or the other and we can say const the status is doc dot data, uh, call that as a method, and then we can access the uh, status and pass that back to the user. So this is the API key status. Equally, we could actually just cut a step out of this and destructure status straight from doc dot data. So we could just get the status here and pass it as a key down there. So that would work equally. And so what we'll just have to do here is add a field status. It can just be uh, null for the minute. We can add that in. So for everyone else that will be created, that should be fine. And we could just come into our index.html and in our section up here where we get the input. So here we have the input. We can give this an ID equals user key we can come down to our script down the bottom we'll make a script in the script tag we'll say const uh, user api key is equal to first we're going to have to actually target the element so we can say input 
is equal to document dot get element by id pass in the user key and then what we can do is we can say input dot value is equal to the key we need to do this inside of a function so this is going to be get car status we can move that in there we can say if there's not a user api key then we can just do nothing return we could even return a message for example we could send something in a second uh, otherwise what we'll do is we'll say try catch error if we get an error we'll console.log error.message and inside of our try block we're going to say const res is equal to await fetch we're going to go to http slash slash local host 1337 we'll say go to that particular route which is going to be check status that's just going to be a get method but what we'll have to do is just append on the api key so that is equal to and so here we can just uh, plus the uh, user api key which is going to be the value and we can say const data is equal to or even better i think we can just destructure status out is equal to await res.json and now we just want to tie this function call to a button so the button that we're going to tie it to is the check status button so i'm just going to uh, give this an id equal to check status button we'll copy that whole thing we'll use some javascript to target here const uh, check status button is equal to document dot get element by id pass in the id and then we can assign this function to that button so we can say check status button dot add event listener it's a click event on the click event we can check the status button and what i might just do is console dot log here status is and then we can actually just paste the status so what we might just do up here is instead of sending back a 500 we could instead just say if the document doesn't exist then we can say status maybe a 400 dot send and we can say status is uh, api key does not exist so let's see if we copy this key here copy that value cancel uh, and we can go back home paste it into this section we can check the status it's going to run that request currently we're not getting anything back in this probably because i need to refresh the page check the status that's still not doing anything and that is because i didn't assign the correct function so i was just making it confusing it wasn't doing anything let's do that once more we're going to have to get the key again the key is just here we can copy that whole value and we can paste it into here so let's see if that gets back we check the status the status is null it is null and now if i were to change the status to a string that says hello uh, save that and do the exact same thing we can check the status and we get the status back as hello so now we can actually check the status of the key what we're also going to do is just do something with these uh, these error messages just here so for this one this one is error message so if we just target error message we're going to say display is none and so now what we can do is we can target that element down here inside of our script const error message is equal to a document dot query selector we can target it by the class which is error message and in here if we get something back that's not what we're expecting so for example if status or if not status better yet so if the status does not exist that means that it's null so we could just say console.log status is null and then in here what we could do is we could actually set this uh, information we might even add an information thing underneath uh, so if the status is null that means that the api key is authenticated so let's just make a note of that so api key authenticated we might also just say a guard clause because if you note if the api key it does not exist then what we do is we send back this status so if we send back this status then we want to set the error message so if status is equal to this then we want to exit out of the function so we're just going to return at the bottom but the main thing that's going to happen is we're going to set the error error message so here we got the error message we've targeted we're going to say error message dot inner text is equal to exactly that 
uh, the status so we could just set it equal to the status and then what we'll do is we'll say error message dot style dot display is equal to just inline for example so what we could do is we could try this with a random key if we just remove that refresh the page that sentence is gone if I just check a random key we check the status nothing comes back the API key does not exist so now we also want to hide our second one which is the API key is authenticated so if we just find authenticated we can give this a display of none also uh, and if we get past this case so if we get past the guard clause then we get to this case so if the status is null we can select this thing up here so we can uh, target the second one we can say const auth message is equal to document dot query selector target by the authenticated message put that inside of string we get the auth message auth message we can say auth message dot style dot display equals inline if the status uh, doesn't exist that can just mean that we can set the auth message dot in a text is equal to no active payments uh, just like that and that should actually be in here so if its status is null and then if there is a status then what we can do is we can actually just set it so we can say auth message dot in a text is equal to well, actually, no, I changed my mind completely. We're just going to authenticate the message, and then we're actually going to have a secondary thing underneath. So we'll just add a message underneath the key, I think. So here we have the check status. We're just going to copy this thing here. So we'll set the authenticated message, which is good, and then we'll just give an, a status update. So we'll just call this status update here. And this is just going to be an empty string for the second. And what we can do is we can select this, just the same way we have here, status update, status update. We can set the status update to no active payments. We can set the auth message to inline, so that will say API key is authenticated. And if there is a status, then we can say uh, template literal string status is passing the status here. And then we could even have like uh, an extra button or something like that that says cancel. So here what I might just do is clarify what the status actually means. It can basically either be, you know, the subscription, which means that there's an active subscription, or it can be the quantity. So let's say it's eight. So maybe what we do is we check and see if there's a value. So uh, status is, we could say in here, you know, like if else if status equals to subscription, we can just say uh, subscription is active even better else what we can do is we can say a status update dot in a text is equal to the quantity so you know api calls remaining plus uh, the status so that would just be a, a string so now what we want to do is just have a cancel subscription button so what i'm going to do is just copy the other buttons that we already have so that's going to be this check status button just here i'm going to copy this underneath status button and i'm going to call this one cancel button and this one's going to be just cancel subscription uh, and this one is going to be a cross or maybe an x well actually let's just have a look we're going to font ice font awesome icons we'll say cross or actually even better let's say cancel we'll just go with the ban copy the ban change out that icon just there so if they have a cancel subscription we're going to set that equal to true so we'll just come in here and we'll say const cancel button is equal to document dot get element by id cancel button if we find that they have a subscription then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, it's this one so they're on a subscription then we'll say cancel button dot display uh, it's actually dot style dot display is equal to inline which is well, actually it'll be flex flex is the style that we want for that and we're just going to have to come up here and quickly style that so I'm just going to target it by its ID because that has the most 
precedence and I'm going to set the uh, background color to coral because that's what we've been using and I'm just going to say cancel uh, button on the hover is going to be equal to background maybe we say light light salmon perhaps so now if we refresh our page let's see what we've got my api we can see that we have this cancel subscription button so that's good however that's going to need to have a default style of display none so that that only comes up after they check the status so what we can do is we can just set the status if they authenticate we set the key. So let's actually just try this out. What we're going to do is we're going to create a checkout. So if they successfully check out, let's just make sure that we set this to correct. So for the data, the status is going to be uh, dependent on the type. So where do we get the type here? So let's, this is going to be equal to uh, quantity type. We'll initialize that up the top. As such, in here, what we'll do is we'll set the quantity type equal to subscription for the subscription. For this one, we'll set the quantity type equal to 10. Then we can pass that in here. That will get generated. We'll create a new API key. We'll push that to everything, and that will be cash money. And then we should be able to check that later. So let's go ahead, refresh that page. We'll try the checkout, get directed to a new page, going to add an email, uh, test at test.com do the demo checkout page subscribe get taken to the new page we have our api key we'll do the authentication for that in a second now we come into the back home we can check the status of the api key we check the status the api key is authenticated and we get a message that says the number of api calls that we have remaining so that is perfect we're actually just going to give this the same syntax as this. So if we come up into our document, wherever we do that, that's right here, we have this status update. We're going to set in a HTML instead. So the way, the same way we set this, so we have .info, we'll actually come down and set that in here. So instead of setting this, we'll set uh, the status update in a HTML is equal to and inside of here we'll just set uh, the div that's all good so we can put this inside of a circular parentheses open that up this is just going to make it look way nicer we'll tab all that in this is going to be subscription status and then this one is going to be active and then we'll make that an uppercase as well and then in this case what we can do is we can do the exact same thing so we can just copy this copy that paste it in here this one can actually just be our template literal value and this one can be api calls as such so let's try that once more we will get that new key we can take it from here we can uh, you know refresh this page get the api key so this is the new one we have the status remaining we'll copy that key paste that in here go back to our thing check the status we got authenticated we've got api calls left 10 if we were to get a new user, so let's say, for example, let's update this so that the status is correct. For this one, we're going to be setting the type to subscription. So we'll update that. Now we can check this API key, cancel that, refresh this page, check the status, check the status. Subscription status is active and we get the cancel subscription button. So that is also super cool. What we could do is we could just add a tiny bit of padding on top of that and we can just do that by coming up to wherever we target the uh, status so we can say dot status what's it called status update and we can just give this a margin top margin top of maybe four pixels so if we do that again refresh that page copy that key it just has a bit more space on top and now we can cancel that subscription so the API key is authenticated, that's all good. If we refresh that and we have a dud key, it's stick, check the status, the API key does not exist. So that's super handy. So now that is all good. The next thing we're gonna do is just quickly do the cancel subscription button. So what we're gonna do here is create another app.get. This one's gonna be uh, slash delete. And in here we're just gonna say rec response open that up and that's just going to have some similar logic so we're going to have to talk to the node.js database 
so we can do that exactly how we've done it here. We're going to have to get the API key. Uh, we have to make this asynchronous. Once we get the API key, if it exists, then we can uh, send a status of just 200. So we'll just say send status. And what we'll do in here is we will have to get the Stripe customer ID. So let's just make sure we copy that. Well, we have to get the customer ID so that we can actually cancel the status. So we'll get the status uh, and then we can cancel the ID pretty easily by typing try. We'll say const customer is equal to await stripe.customers.retrieve and we'll just pass in the stripe customer ID and we'll pass in a secondary thing that's expand and we'll just uh, pass in array subscriptions. Uh, we'll have the catch section, the error console.log error.message. If we get this, we'll return res dot status five uh, send status 500 otherwise it'll worked and all we have to do now is say let subscription id equal to customer dot subscriptions dot data take the first index and get the id and then finally we say stripe dot subscriptions dot delete and pass in the subscription id so that should work for the delete route now we can just wire that up on the front end. Uh, so if we come into index.html, if we just find the cancel button, which is right here, we can target that. We can create a new function, which is just async function cancel sub. Easy breezy, copy a lot of this logic so we can get the API key. Honestly, we could copy most of this, the whole thing. And then we can gut out some of this inner content just after that. So. So now we'll just change this to delete so that it matches the delete route. And then what we could do is we could actually just get the message. So if we just say status update dot in a text, that actually reminds me, we probably want to make sure that this is equivalent. So I might just replace all of this here. Uh, we can say current status and we can say inactive. But anyway, if they do have a canceled key, we can say a current status inactive as well once they've canceled it on a successful patch request. So now what we want to do is assign that to the cancel button. So we can say cancel button dot add event listener click and we can just say cancel sub. So let's just see if that all works. We can get the current subscription one, copy that API key, cancel. We can come into our page, refresh that page check the status, the status is active, we can cancel the status, the status is inactive. We got an internal server error, let's see what that is. We got undefined back. So something obviously went wrong in here. What I might just do is remove all of this statusing so that we can see exactly what happens. Refresh that, run this all again, cancel the subscription. And now we get a stripe.customers.retrieve is not a function. And that's because I cannot spell retrieve. So let's restart that, do that once more. Cancel that subscription. We get a new error. Looks like we're not getting anything back here. So let's just console.log the customer. Cancel that subscription. We get back a whole lot of stuff. The ID, URL, subscriptions, data. Okay, so currently there is no ID or subscription in there. Let's just check that that has worked. And maybe what we'll do is we'll actually just create one more. So let's just refresh this whole page, restart our server. npm run dev, refresh the page, check out a new subscription. We say sub2 at sub2.com, 4242 all of this good information. Name on the card, subscribe. We get a success, we get a new API key. We can see that the API key has been generated inside of our database right there. So that's perfect. It's a type sub, status is subscription. We can come into our API thing back home, check the status. We check the status of the key. The API key is authenticated. We can cancel the subscription. We can see that we do in fact get back a thing and now the subscription status is inactive. And if we come into our customers and check, refresh this page, we can see that sub and sub two is canceled and that whole thing works. So now we can bring back this try and catch logic because our cancel route is perfect. And now the last thing we have to do is actually just make our API key work. 
So here what we're going to do is we're just going to do exactly the same thing as we've done down here. We're going to check the status of the API key. So this is going to be an asynchronous route. We're going to get the information back. We're going to set a status parameter. Uh, so we'll just call that paid status. What we're also going to do is get a type back. And so in here what we can do is we can get the status and we can get the type. And then if the doc with the API key doesn't exist, we'll send back API key is invalid and we'll send back a status code of 403. Otherwise the document does exist. Then what we'll do is we will get the status and the type out from doc data and we'll say if the status is equal to subscription, then we'll do one set of logic and then we'll say else if status greater than equal to zero, uh, so it'd actually be greater than zero, then what we'll do is we will send back this uh, res.status thing and we'll have to update the uh, message so we can do that back in both cases. So what we could actually do is we could actually just set uh, paid status equals true. We'll say paid status is equal to true. And then here we can say if paid status, then we can send back this res.status. Otherwise what we do is we send back res.send status 403. So what we have to do here is we're just going to make sure we check all the different cases. So when they delete, we have to update the current status. So what we're gonna to have to do for that is come down to where we create this line. We're gonna to have to copy this line uh, and make sure that we just add it to our delete logic. So in here, once we've deleted the subscription ID, we're just going to set the status to uh, API key does not exist. Where do we send that if it doesn't exist? Let's see what we handle on the front. So the cases that we handle is uh, if it's not status, so that, that's null basically. So if it's null, so we'll set it to null instead, I think is the better way to do it. So all we do here is set that to null. We've got the API key, it will merge the rest of the data. If the paid status is true in this case, then what we're going to do is copy this delete logic. So we're just going to get the data right to the database and decrement that amount. So instead the status is going to be the current value of the status. So it's gonna be status minus one, just like that, so that's chill. So now we can just test if that works, for example. So to test that, what I'm gonna do is create a new file called a test.rest, and I'm just going to send it to HTTP. It's gonna be a get, so get HTTP slash slash local host 1337 slash API. Uh, it's a get request, is that the correct route? It sure is, and now we're just gonna have to take the API key, so we will take one for a paid status. So this one is paid, we'll check this key, come back into here, set the API key equal to that, send that request, that gets fired off to our server, we get nothing back and that's because we have to make sure that the new API key is correct. So new API key doesn't exist, but what does exist is the API key. So we'll update that inside of our delete route and we will update that inside of this route just here. So we get the API key, we'll run that once more. We do in fact get back a message. Now let's make sure that the value on this fella has been incremented. It has indeed been incremented, so that is absolutely perfect. That one is working. So now we can just do the other one, which is this paid status. So for that, we have to make sure we increment the usage on Stripe. And so the way that we can do that is by copying this logic just here, uh, we're going to come up to our delete route. We're going to paste that in just there. And so since we've pasted all of this in here, it looks like what we can do is once we get the subscription ID, we can say const subscription is equal to await stripe.subscriptions.retrieve and we can pass in the subscription ID. And then from that, what we can do is we can say const item ID is equal to subscription uh, dot items dot data zero dot id say const record equals stripe dot subscription items dot create usage record and now what we can do is we can pass in the item id just here and then we can pass in an object that has a quantity of one a timestamp of now and an action that is increment just like that. Now where is this unhappy? 
uh, and that is unhappy because that should not be curly braces just in there. So that is our create usage record. So now we create a usage record and then we can just, once again, set the paid status. That's gonna create the record and we should be able to see that happen now. So let's just console.log record created. Save that and now we can test this. And so to test it, here I'm going to I'm going to come into our API. I'm going to check out. That's going to take us to the subscription screen. Here we can enter a random email, rando at rando.com. Do the card info for the testing, just like that. Subscribe, and now we get this API key just here. We can test that this API key works by checking the status. We do in fact authenticate the key. Here we could cancel the subscription, but we're not going to do that. And so we should be able to come into customers here. Check out this customer. We have rando right here. The subscription is active in our thing if we look for this key the key is nr so let's check out nr just here we have a subscription we have the stripe customer id we should be able to test this key now and see if we can make this function properly and we can see that we did indeed create a record we did indeed return the correct response and now let's check that this amount has been invoiced we can see now that the active subscription is valid. We have a quantity one, we have a view usage on the 25th. So that would be that. Let's try that again and see if we run it twice. We once again get another record. And now let's check the invoice. And we can see that's updated to two. So they will get billed for that total amount at the end of the month. And that is also perfect. So now we have a working subscription model. We have a working prepaid model. The user can cancel their account if they like. So I could come into our API, check the status once again, it's active and now I can cancel that subscription. The status is inactive. And now if we refresh the status in here, pending test auto cancellation, canceled subscription and we update it in our account and the status is now null. So just like that, we can track the usage of the API and we can allow the user to manage their account inside of our little platform, which is super handy. Current status is inactive. The last thing I'm gonna do is just comment out these little circles. They didn't end up really being necessary. They were going to be uh, to check the status of the API key, but it looks like they're just a little bit random. So what we're gonna do is just comment them out, refresh the page. We just have an API key input. And honestly, that's pretty much it. From here, all you need to do is swap out of test mode and change these keys in here for live keys. So when we create the initial session, we set the price IDs here. So you'll want to change the price IDs to live price IDs. And then all that will be working and you'll obviously want to update your ENV to use a live key inside of your environment variables wherever you deploy this project. You can obviously do a bunch more different API routes, but this is fundamentally how you would authenticate the two different types if it's, if it's a prepaid system or a subscription system. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You are ready to start making money. Your users will be billed at the end of the month or they will be billed in advance for their usages. And just to be extra sure, we could run this request again and see that it's forbidden. And so now that we've canceled our subscription, the API is rejected. So if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been waiting to put this out for a while, so I hope you guys really enjoyed. And yeah, maybe consider hitting the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.